This week's episode of Arden is brought to you by Tavor, the app for fans of beer, craft brews, and new and exciting labels. And join the party, a great Dungeons & Dragons podcast from our friends at Multitude. This episode contains adult language, loud noises, vivid discussion of gore and violence, discussions of alcoholism, and discussions of suicidal self-harm thoughts. Last time on Arden. What about Brenda? She stood in your way for most of the show. Anybody can see that. Eight years ago, Dan Hamill was found dead on his ranch, Hamill Hills. His death rocked his small town of Elsinore, Montana. He was murdered. Somebody... Somebody did this to him. She was wronged over and over and over. I get that you've been researching this for the past ten months or whatever. Yes. Yes, I have. And we should just mention Dana's name. It's all. It's her story. <laughs> I'll come and visit often, but my life is here. Well, that time I was visiting the moon mine. Good luck to whoever's lives are going to ruin this. And I'm ready to come back. Arden is still brought to you by Wayface Industries. We miss you guys. We don't talk enough. You look great. Me too. You're too kind. My secret is Wayface brand Pilates. The good Pilates. Dan Hamill didn't have to die. A gruesome death on a ranch near Elsinore has raised questions for the dead man's family, but not for authorities. Accident or murder? Dan Hamill stepped into a grain bin to fix a piece of clogged machinery and never stepped out again. Whoa, this is thorough. I told you Rosalind prepared a 54-page document and that you should look it over last night. Who wants to dive right back into work after a vacation, right? A vacation! Well, we'll skim it while I talk, I guess. <sighs> For listeners unfamiliar with farm country... Most of you, presumably. Let me set the scene. A grain bin is a tall, wide cylinder. Corrugated metal sides. Cement floor. It tapers to a point at the top, creating a massive, echoing room. It's used to store grain, hence the name. Dan Hamill used the bin where he died to store corn to feed his cattle when they weren't grazing in a pasture. Maybe the cows did it. Hey... Good episode title, right? The cows did it. Inside this bin was something called an auger. Again, let me explain. A long central shaft around which is wrapped a blade, a screw as tall as a man. When it's turned on, the blade turns viciously, funneling corn out of the bin to where it needs to go next. No one knows why Dan emptied the bin that day, but it was in that bin he met his... Oh my God! His whole scalp came off? I am painting word pictures, Brenda. Yeah, just... Oh, yeesh. Woof. I mean, yeah, bad. Yes, it's generally considered good to keep your scalp attached to your head. Boy, I wish I'd read this last night. Too bad someone didn't bring that up. I miss this. Me too. Dan stepped in to fix the auger, and it caught his foot, dragging him down into its maw, then snapping his leg and his back before his hair got caught and... I didn't know scalps popped off, like a Pringles can. Pringles cans don't pop open. Turns you off from buzz cuts, am I right? A man has died. Officially, the police ruled the death as an accident. They said Dan forgot to turn off the auger before stepping in the bin. But his daughter Dana never bought that explanation. His daughter says, Dan's death was the perfect murder. Are we sure this isn't just an accident? If you want to murder somebody, this seems way too elaborate. You know what I always say, sock him in the jaw. What you always say about murder is sock him in the jaw? I know we've talked about this before. Dana Hamill called Team Arden. And on that phone call, she said, My uncle has a guilty conscience. I want you to catch him in a lie. And yes, at first blush, this seems like a simple accident. But then we kept digging, and we found out this is a story of small-town corruption. 
of familial strife, of the hollowing out of the American Oh, West. hey! Rosalind's report has a whole page of illustrations! Oh, that is very graphic. The blood splatter diagrams are pretty cool, right? Even for MS Paint. Rosalind's an MS Paint whiz for sure. But I want to know this is more than a sad story. That it's worthy of season two of America's finest true crime podcast. Um, Mr. Murder Man has a copyright on the phrase America's finest true crime podcast. God, I hate that guy. I'll show him who won't follow back on Twizzler. But yes, this is a good story. It's got murder and betrayal and the real true crime. Oh, boy. The gutting of rural America, a place where everyone hangs on by a thread, a place that will shower you with unconditional love, but only if you conform to its standards, a place that can... Wow. You went there, huh? I really, really, really want this story to be about more than crime, you know? After Julie Caps, um, I want something that makes people think about real issues. The twisted tendrils of abuse and patriarchy in the entertainment industry weren't enough. Is it bad if I say no? Uh, I guess we're going to Montana then. Wait, twisted tendrils? Do you read my blog? Shortly before Easter in 2011, a Montana rancher stepped into a grain bin to fix a mechanical error. He wouldn't step out again. The local police ruled it an accident, but his daughter has spent the last eight lonely, quixotic years trying to prove that he was murdered. So was this the perfect murder? And what does Dan Hamill's death tell us about the decline of the American small town and the American dream? Join us, won't you, as we unravel this mystery on Arden. Everybody loved him, you know? Friends in every corner of town. But he was my dad. I never realized how lucky that made me. Not until he was gone. This is Dana Hamill. She's 29. And when she turns 30 in December, she expects to inherit Hamill Hills, the ranch that was her father's life's work, the ranch that has been in her family for generations. And even there, her plans have been foiled. Dan Hamill's ambiguous will and testament has caused heated litigation. The will said I would inherit the ranch when I was ready. I can almost hear your next question, what does ready mean? And that's exactly what we've been arguing about in court for almost 10 years. Ah, well, do you want to tell us what it's like living on a ranch with the same people that you've been suing for nearly a decade? I mean, bad. (laughs) (laughs) Dana has already struggled so much for someone her age. Her father's death, legal battles with her mother and uncle, and the dissolution of her marriage at 24. They say you really get it together in your 30s. (laughs) Ugh, I hope so. (laughs) But despite these setbacks, Dana is well-liked both in town and among the ranch hands. She's even known for performing original songs at open mics. I'd call her indomitable. You, Brenda? I mean, I haven't met her yet, but let's say... Plucky? I'm going with indomitably plucky. The fact remains. Dana was supposed to inherit Hamill Hills, and some combination of legal machinations and small-town sexism means she won't. Instead, it will remain under the control of her uncle, Clyde Hamill, her father's brother. And to make matters worse... Since he married my mom, technically, he's my stepfather. Technically. There's no love lost between the two. Dana plans to mount another legal challenge as soon as she can scrape up the money. Most of the money she stood to inherit from her father has also been tied up in court. You're not going to read a GoFundMe address now, are you? I'm not now. Just saying. Rosalind wrote the script. I could literally write anything on a piece of paper and you'd read it if you were in the zone, huh? No. I got carried away. I'll have to have a chat with Rosalind about not seeming like we're too much in Dana's corner. There. Okay. But for now, Dana Hamill sits and waits. A few days ago, she took me up into the foothills around the ranch around sunrise. 
It was late winter, still frost on the grass. Our breath hung in the air. The lights on the ranch below still twinkled. God, this place looks beautiful this time of day. She carried a rifle over her shoulder. She said it was in case we met cougars, but I think she was trying to show off. Not that she needs to. She's got targets set up all over the ranch, and she can hit them from 100 yards away, almost without having to line up the shot. I see why they call it Big Sky Country. Hard to explain how big it is on the radio, huh? Big and open and... Like, if you just knew where to look, you'd see something bigger than yourself and get it. You know? Right. Like looking at the ocean. Feeling your own insignificance. If you say so, pal. (laughs) Okay. Okay, okay, here. Let me try telling your listeners. Listeners, it's cold right now, flirting with freezing, but the sky's starting to turn purple, and we can hear the cattle calling in the distance. Pretty soon, the first little flecks of orange sunlight will start to glint off the snow cap, and somewhere, somewhere... (laughs) Well, I was right the first time. No way you can explain it on the radio. No. That was lovely. Oh, hell, a cougar! Ah! 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 God, you should see your face. <laughs> oh, what a city gal. <laughs> <laughs> Look, anybody who plays animal related pranks is cool with me, but. You're still skeptical her dad was murdered? Brenda, we've looked into this. Trust me. I do trust you. I still think killing somebody in a farming accident is a little over the top. Well, that's not what the sheriff of Elsinore thinks. He's reopened the case. I know the family well. Who doesn't around here? But I'm not reopening the case as a favor to anyone. In fact, it's gotten me a lot of guff. You're hearing Rosalind's initial interview with Sheriff Jake Wonder. Wonder? With a U. But yes, Wonder. This is Sheriff Wonder. Come out with your hands up, and we don't have to play nasty. Sheriff Wonder has the squarest jaw imaginable. Like if you fell on it, you could cut open your head. Like serious head trauma. That's sexy? Thick, wavy hair. A little stubble. A physique that more than displays his military training. So you like cops now? No, but come on. He's a Midwestern Captain America. Pamela, make sure to cut out any dreamy size. Yeah, I've got my hand on the eliminate dreamy side button. There's a button? Anyway, junior reporter Rosalind Ursula talked to Sheriff Wonder a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> Sheriff Wonder. Jesus. Gossip is that you're doing this as a favor to Dana Hamill. I'm actually closer to the mother, Trudy Hamill. We did some community college courses together right when I moved back to town, after the Marines. Well, she can't be happy about that. Trudy Hamill is Dana's mother, but also Clyde Hamill's wife. You know, this whole set of twisted family dynamics is just like that one movie, uh... Akira Kurosawa's The Bad Sleep Well. No. Oh, oh. The Spaghetti Western, The Wild and the Dirty. Nah. Keep going, I'll think of it. No, Trudy isn't happy, and neither is Clyde. But Dan, his reputation precedes him around here, and we have to find some way to let his spirit be at peace. So what evidence prompted you to reopen the case? There were some persuasive pieces of evidence that still haven't been released to the public. But what really got to me were the 38 hours. And you can discuss those details with the press. Maybe I shouldn't. But my mother was a journalist. I believe in the freedom of the press. Also, the 38 hours were already in the public record. Hard to keep that a secret. The 38 hours refer to a period in early 2012 when Clyde Hamill was briefly arrested in connection with the murder of Jan Hamill. He was in a local jail for 38 hours. For 20 of those hours, he was questioned, sometimes with a lawyer present, sometimes without. He was released 
and never charged. So we have a complete record of those hours, except for the 37th hour. The 37th hour, we don't have that. I can't tell you exactly how that last recording ends, but it strongly suggests something untoward. And then one hour later, one hour, he was released. Sounds fishy to me. And Sheriff Jake Wonder has good reason to dig into police misconduct on this case. He was swept into office in the 2018 midterms on an anti-corruption platform. The Lion King. Huh? This whole story is a lot like The Lion King. The Lion... what? You haven't seen... You haven't seen The Lion King? Is that the one where Melanie Griffith nearly died because a lion mauled her? No! The cartoon! Simba, I am your father. No, 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 that's Empire. It's more like... Simba, remember me. Never heard of it. Oh, we're having a movie night. So, can I see those transcripts or the evidence? (laughs) Believe me, I support the freedom of the press, but I'm not jeopardizing this investigation. I tell you what, once those files are public, you'll be the first person I call. So what's in those files? That's what we're here to find out. Personally, I think you would love Zazu. We're back at Hamill Hills, the ranch where Dana is most at home. Her eyes clear and her The listeners get it, Bia. Rural America got the shaft. Boo, capitalism. There, I summarized it. I have to say, hearing the two of you argue in person, it's like getting to see Springsteen live, you know? Something that can't be captured on recording. (laughs) Oh, my God. <clears throat> oh, fascinating. You have a horse? Yeah, sorry, just one. Chrysanthemum makes a hell of a racket around strangers. Clyde got her for me when... I'll go calm her down. It's just a quick walk to her stable. Actually, it's, it's great ambient noise. Do you mind if I go record her close up? Why not? Do you want me to... I guess when a girl sees a horse. I ever tell you about my tiny horses theory in R.E. colon Julie Capsum? I did listen to the show. I kept hoping there would be aliens, at least. I know, right? What we found out was so much more depressing. (laughs) Well, some great night skies here for stargazing, or whatever else might be in the night sky. (laughs) By the way, will I get to meet Andy? That guy seems like a hoot. Oh boy, is he. Shh. Shh. Chrysanthemum. I love your stable. And I have sugar cubes. Don't you want a sugar cube? Let me love you. Okay. Ah! Lorena, what are you doing here? I mean, hi! It's great to see you! You're still looking at the horse. Sorry. So I found out the Jerry Cooper got his start at a haunted community theater nearby. And I heard in town that this ranch is also haunted, but I doubt it will fit into my larger narrative. Haunted? And do you mean Gary Cooper? That hack? God, no. Jerry Cooper is a hidden gem. Also, well, I'm here because of a certain gorgeous podcaster. I know you and your crew have a lot to do, but tonight I'd love to have dinner with everyone. There's this adorable pub. Tonight? Bia. It's a new case. And Bia. I, I have all this stuff to go over. Bia. What? It's important. Please? I'll be there. Work just... Now, I understand. We both love our jobs. I don't deserve you. Of course you do. But I have to ask, I, you know, why do you have sugar cubes? I told her there might be a horse! How did she hear us? She hears everything. Why is everybody here? Oh, Pamela and Rosalind gave me a ride, and Andy came along when he heard there would be cowboys. It's a working ranch. There aren't literal cow. <laughs> Hooray! Hooray! Another loop-de-loop. Uh, Andy, <laughs> it's called a lasso. <laughs> then loop-de-loop isn't yet trademarked. Oof. <sighs> Didn't think I could still do that. 
Dana won the state high school rodeo girls lasso competition three years straight. Uh, it's not that impressive. Only a few girls entered. I was also the 2009 rodeo queen. Ah, my island had a similar tradition, involving a sheep, the ocean, and an ancient curse. Before leaving, I was named the Duke of Sheep twice. That was when I was but a boy, of course. I should really get back for Sheep Fest. <laughs> oh, God, this guy. Is he for real? <laughs> he has enough money to create his own reality. It's interesting working with him. Pamela... You can say we're friends. Mm, I go so far as workplace acquaintances. I sent you a flag day card. Yeah, about that. Never oh, mind, yeah. never mind. I'm solving a mystery of my own. Now, rodeo is the one they have every four years that loses all the money? Not quite. It's kind of a cowboy stunt show. My God. And you didn't go pro? You could have been the most famous woman alive. Uh, thought about it, but I had a lot on my mind back then. What's up with that chain and padlock around that rusty grain bin? Right. That. I guess we have to talk about that. Who's got problems? I've got problems. I've got problems. I spilled my bucket, so I've definitely got problems. And who's got answers? Pamela! The lady with the answers you need. Pamela! Yes, folks, Wayface Radio super producer Pamela Pink has a talent for cutting to the quick for any problem you could think of. And that's why we're launching her new show every weekday, a show called... Pamela! Let's hear a clip. I caught my fiancé cheating on me. Leave him. No, 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 that's not my problem. My problem is that he was dressed as a swan. Mm Mm-hmm. And my answer is to leave him. Yeah, okay. She diagnoses professional problems. So I work as a seer. No, that's not a thing. I see the future, lady. That's the job. The problem is that I'm blind, and all anybody wants to talk about is a dramatic irony. How do I get people to take me more seriously in my work environment? Well, have you tried dire portents of doom? No. I've really been focusing on birthdays, christenings, weddings, you know, that sort of thing. No. Okay, death and destruction all the way. This is a fear-based business. Next! And she'll mend heartbreaking familial riffs. He was gone for ten years, and then he comes back and expects me to pick up where we left off when all these guys are hanging around in my courtyard? By Marriott? Let me take this out to all the men listening right now. What is wrong with you? What the hell? You're hanging out in courtyards? Honestly, lady, here's the Pamela special. Turn the hose on them. Your husband, too. Focus on yourself. I do have a weaving business. Been meaning to get my loom out of storage. Hell yeah. You know what I always say? You don't need a man to loom. Listen to Pamela every weekday from 2 to 4 p.m. or any time in podcast form. Hi, Arden fans. It's co-creator Emily Vanderwerf, and here's something you might not know about me. I am an avid tabletop role-playing gamer, and a lot of people think that you sort of have to develop this hobby early in life, but I came to it in my 30s. I came to it when I was a grown-ass adult, and let me tell you, it has helped me so much in figuring out better how I like to tell stories, in hanging out with friends, and in just having a great time. Lots of people think that role-playing games are daunting, but I think that the best way to learn them is to listen to a podcast. A podcast like Join the Party from our friends at Multitude. This is, for my money, the best Dungeons & Dragons podcast out there. It uses the rules of D&D to tell really exciting, interesting, funny stories, and it's got a group of great friends who gather around the table to tell those stories. Campaign 2 just launched in April, and it takes place in a small city in upstate New York that is teeming with superheroes. But if you'd rather have a more traditional fantasy story, you can go back and listen to Campaign 1, which is done in its entirety. So, if you want to learn how to play Dungeons
Dungeons and Dragons, or if you just want to hear some great storytellers tell a great story they're making up on the fly, or if you just enjoy the sound of dice rolling, Join the Party is the show for you. Once again, you should join Join the Party on your podcatcher of choice. And I wrote a jingle for them. I hope they like it. Join the party. I joined my colleagues by the rusty bin, a stark contrast to the three additional bins, sleek, silver, and gleaming like brand new. Dana's hands shook as she unlocked the padlock and chains. It's... I just... I knew the police didn't... I... Show them. Is this... Dana never bought her father a gravestone. For her, a gravesite represents peace. Dana does not want peace. So this is where my father died. Dana has perfectly preserved the bin as it was when her father died. It is an echoing church, a religion founded upon... Too many metaphors, Bia. Sorry, I'm just... Really excited! I mean, a preserved crime scene? So human, so raw, such a metaphor. It's generally more effective if you don't say, look, a metaphor. Tell it to Herman Melville! Have you moved anything? Just some corn. It started to rot. I left some with the blood on it. Sorry about the smell. The bloodstained auger lies at a broken angle, piercing the center of the room. We know this looks extreme, but the only forensic examination was garbage. I mean, the workman's jacket caught in the auger never dusted for prints. The jacket survived? Wouldn't it have been shredded? The police had problems with Dad. Wasn't your father well-loved? Yes, but you know small-town cops. Uh Uh-huh. How often do you come in here? Do you all want tea? I'll get tea. Uh, maybe take it easy on the dead guy's daughter? Yes, this place is amazing! Look, there is still blood right there! You hear the echoes in here? So eerie. Is Dana okay? Are, Are we exploiting... She came to us, Brenda. She wants this. A woman teetering on the edge, clinging to a monument of her father's death. A ranch slipping through her dirt-covered hands. I gotta write this down. Now, Dana is single-minded, yeah, but she's not wrong. And the story isn't just about her, it's about her father, too. About catching his killer. Right. You know, we're not dropping this case just because you came back. Rosalind, I am very excited about this story. Truly. I have so many angles. Why, thank you, Bia. But we should address something. Lorena mentioned that the ranch is haunted. Oh. Uh... Dana pours us iced tea with dried apples in it. It's too sweet. I like it. Through the kitchen window, we can see the rusted silo. Dana glances at it while we talk. Grief flickers in the corner of her eye. This is delicious. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. I told you. No one makes an iced tea like Dana. You sure you don't want some, uh, Brenda? It's getting late. I get you. I'm really sensitive to caffeine. Water? Dana, I don't mean to push, but we want to know more about the apparition. (sighs) Uh, That was a joke between me and Rosalind. Weird joke. I meant metaphor. Dana, it's okay. This is a safe space. That's what they always call the press, a safe space. Dana, why did you tell Rosalind about the ghost? I told you, it's a metaphor. We won't judge you. We promise. We just want to understand. After all, Brenda believes in aliens. Look, I never said... Okay, I'm open to their existence. And cryptids. The skunk ape. (laughs) I thought I saw one of those one night. 
but it was Paul the Foreman. The point is, we know what it is to feel like you're alone in believing something odd. So tell us your story, Dana. We want to hear it. Okay. My father was the first person I lost. I didn't know how to grieve. I could only feel when I drank, so I drank a lot. One night I needed to be near him. I went into the bin. For the first time I saw the blood and the smell and I couldn't. I ran out. I climbed on its roof. I thought if I jump, even if I just break a leg, I'll feel something besides grief. So I closed my eyes and braced myself and I felt something wash over me. I felt safe. I felt him. I opened my eyes and they say it was a trick of the light, but I saw him there hovering in front of me in midair, an outline. It was him. I know it. I... I gotta get out of here. <clears throat> well, Brenda needs her steps. I'll talk to her. Do you want to be here? A ghost? A ghost, Pamela? Do you buy any of this? Yeah. I buy that we have a preserved crime scene that sheds light on a legal dispute that affects the town's economy, all hinging on an hour of lost police records. There's something off about this case. Everything that happens, you second guess. I appreciate the skepticism. Hey, maybe we need it. But there's being skeptical and there's not trusting your colleagues. It's not a good case for the show, Pamela. There's no smoking gun. Wow. You don't trust us to pick a case without you. Okay, fine. Maybe I don't, but you know what? My name's on the damn show, Pam. Rosalind is too green for it, and Bia is distracted by whatever rural tragedy porn she's cooked up in her head. And okay, yeah, I was gone, so I don't exactly know what's going on. So we're all out of it. Honestly, I think you're jealous. Of what? You already said it. The show was named after your detective agency, but now it's barely yours. It's just another Andy Wayface money-making scheme. And when a bunch of people do their best to make it without you and succeed, you can't settle in and be okay with that. Am I even close to right? Do you wish I'd stayed gone? No. But if you don't want to be here, you should leave. We don't have to like each other. We just have to work together. I like you. And until Italy, I thought you liked me. Oh, come on. Are you still mad about the things I said to Bia about you and Verona? You did say she was carrying me, and it wasn't fun to hear. I didn't mean it personally. Yeah, I didn't take Brenda's bad at her job as a personal insult, not in the slightest. Look, we tried to do the show without you. It didn't go great. I will admit... Arden is better with you on it, but only if you're actually on it. Wow. Are we becoming friends? <laughs> My husband. Gotta go. Wait, you're married? Yeah. Why do you think I'm so happy? What do you miss about the year 2005? Less social media despondency? A Nazi-free news cycle? Your forgotten youth? No, you're wrong and depressing. You missed Flash Mobs, an improv show you did not sign up for and cannot escape. On demand, that's right, it's an app. Flashed. Locate your closest Flash Mob organizer and embrace a simpler time. Gather with others, be absurd, have a laugh, eat a banana. Flashed. Download Flashed today. What Wired magazine called the Uber of Flash Mobs. The New Yorker called problematically named. And Martha Stewart called a weird thing to yell at me about in an elevator. Let's put this in action, friends. Let's find a flash mob organizer right now. They're close, very close. Hello, Andy. Lorena, you're the flash mob organizer? <gasps> We're all about to be flashed. 
Andy, maybe you should run that name by legal. <laughs> How you jest. How about HR? Flashed. Hey, gentle listeners. It's your old pal, Emily Vanderwerf, co-creator of Arden. And I'm here to tell you which characters drink beer. Be a yes. Brenda, yes. Rosalind, yes. Pamela, yes. Andy, no, he doesn't drink. Chris and Sarah can't stop me from making that canon. Dana, yes. Julie, yes. Ralph, yes. Gerald Abernathy, I believe, is canonically like sober now, so he probably doesn't drink. But basically just assume everyone else in the cast drinks beer. And for those folks who are beer drinkers among us, including many of these fictional people I just rattled off, Tavur is the app. It's for fans of beer, of craft brews, and trying new and exciting labels. Here's what you do. You sign up in the app, which you can get on Google or Apple, and you can choose the beers you're interested in, including two new ones daily. You add them to a personalized crate, you pay for those beers as you add them to your crate, and you ship whenever you're ready. The price of shipping doesn't change with the size of your order. Now, if you are somebody who likes to try new beers, but is like really overwhelmed by the cost of shipping single beers to yourself, this is a really great way to try sort of a bunch at once, and it's more cost-effective because you're only paying that shipping price one time and Tavor works with only independent breweries around the world. So download the app on the Apple or Google store. That's T-A-V-O-U-R. T-A-V-O-U-R. I'm going to make a song, so you have to remember it. T-A-V-O-U-R. And so now you're going to try Tavor now. So use Arden. That's the code Arden, A-R-D-E-N, for $10 off after your first order of $25 or more. Again, the app is Tavor, T-A-V-O-U-R, and the code is Arden, A-R-D-E-N, for $10 off after your first order of $25 or more. My goodness. Can I help you, sir? (laughs) Can anyone really help anyone? Yes. Correct. Now, can you tell me, do you pay for those? The peanuts? No. No. But you pay for the beer. Yes. Oh, such chaos. Sir, have you been to a bar before? Ooh, antlers! D- did you kill that animal? No. Did someone? Oh, silly me. Of course, someone did. Those are plastic. Fascinating. What whimsy a podcast mogul encounters in the field. Wait, you were at that Arden podcast? I've been meaning to talk to someone about... I'm certain you have important, crucial, and mind-blowing facts to reveal about this case, which will rivet myself, your podcatcher of choice, and then the world. Sir, you're very close to my face. I am. And I have something even more important than your mind-blowing reveal. I never said that... A favor. A request. Something bigger than my pitched front cowboy hat and authentic ranch slippers. Will you... Help me. Move some tables? Sure. I know you're meeting Lorena, but if you could drop me at the hotel. She wants everyone there for dinner. You're coming. And we've got 30 minutes. I want to follow a lead. Lead? What lead? Follow me. The sheriff's office? Why? I haven't met Sheriff Jake yet. I'd like to. Establish a rapport. Oh, hey, you must be Bea Casey. And Detective Bentley, another small-town cop. We have got to compare notes. (laughs) Mine are composed in a tight but unmistakably feminine scrawl. Uh, I noticed. I taught myself to write in a serif. Ooh. The bins out on Hamill Hills. So are they on a separate power node from the house? Well, sure. Uh, Lots of folks have that kind of setup. I'm sure. You're sure. How are you sure? So on the night Dan Hamill died... There must have been a record of the power usage to the bins. And we'll know if the auger was on or off before he entered the bin. I don't get it. Let's recap, folks. There are multiple electrical nodes on a standard ranch. One for the house, one for the outbuildings, and so on and so on. And Hamill Hills has one just for the grain bins. That means we can track the electrical usage for the auger that killed Dan Hamill by the minute. If it's on before Dan enters the bin, he's made a fatal mistake. If it turns on while he's in the silo, that means... It's murder. I wish it were that simple. 
Ugh. But it's a good thought. When is this podcast going out? Not until we've completed our investigation. We're not having another Julie Capsum situation. Right. So, when Dan Hamill entered that bin, so as far as we can guess, the auger was on. He probably forgot to turn it off. Probably. And we just have records of raw power usage. When he enters the bin, the power level is consistent with the auger being on. Even if it's clogged, the grid is still trying to power it. How do you know when he entered? I wouldn't call this a lucky break, but his watch, a real fancy watch, gets broken at some point in the accident. So we can guess down to within 10 minutes when he gets caught in the auger, okay? So he walks in, gets his foot or something caught, and he's going to... just an accident. We're wasting our time. I wouldn't say that. A couple of minutes later... The power level drops. The auger turned off. So someone saw what happened and tried to help. That makes sense, right? And back in 2011, the investigation stopped there. But I looked a little further along. There's a short gap of a few minutes, and then... The power level rises again. We can't prove it 100%, but that auger turns back on with Dan Hamill caught in it. So the auger was on when Dan Hamill was in the bin. Turned off, then turned back on. What are you saying? I'm saying someone saw an opportunity. Accident turned murder. Accident. Let me show your listeners my trailer. (laughs) It's a little cramped, admittedly, but... I like it. Except for the plastic taped over the windows. Yeah. Been meaning to replace them, but Ah! only got as far as the plastic. (laughs) It's homey. Real nice. Real nice, listeners. (laughs) My ex and I bought it right after we got, well, you know. I'm sorry. Can we be done? Yeah. 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 (sighs) Are you okay? Today was a lot. I mean, this whole case is a lot, but... Yeah, no, it's it's reminding me of a lot of things, but... I mean, you really didn't have to be there the whole time we were recording today. We're all podcast pros. We can handle it. No, no, I know. I Fine. Promise. It's... Everything in my life changed because of that night. And to have you folks here trying to help me set it right. And we are going to set it right, Dana. We are. I promise you. I promise. Is that really a promise you can make? (laughs) Well, we found Julie Capsum. This will be a piece of cake. (laughs) And what about you? Are you okay? I thought you were going to be the host. Yeah, that... That was... (sighs) I really didn't care. No, no big deal. Brenda's back. It's amazing. (sighs) I'm sure. (laughs) Uh, but, listen, long day for both of us. We should hang. Do you want to hear another song I've been working on? Ah, I got this work thing. I'm sorry. Next time? Sure. Next time. Everywhere I go Everything I see, what I've got to do is staring back at me. All the time I wait, all the time I stall. In my mind, I'm making progress, but I've done nothing at all. Gotta show them my mean business. Sleep and eat and then repeat A human life is incomplete If we don't use our minds to beat The troubles that we have But thought alone is not enough Our lives are made of stronger stuff Am I afraid? Why do I just do nothing? Everywhere I go a girl can't be an electrical engineering enthusiast? Uh, huh? 
bad. Listen, I'll admit, there's more there than I thought to this case. But it's still a little thin on the ground. I gave you hard evidence, Brenda. What is this really about? It's Dana. Gotta show my mean business. People scream and fight and die for reasons so much less than I have held. I never even cry. There's something wrong inside me. No more questions, just the facts. I've caused enough. It's time to act. At this point, there's no going back. The case is cracked. Hurry up. Hurry up, 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 everywhere. I said it before and I'll say it again, something is off. And isn't that great? It's not just a mystery, it's a character piece, like S-Town. Are we going to out some dead people? Because I'm not down for that. After Julie, we wanted something. we all wanted something different. the time I stall. You the radio folks? I mean, we're some radio folks. Take some credit, Bia. You're definitely one of the radio folks. Clyde Hamill. Clyde. Uh, oh, Clyde Hamill. The Clyde Hamill. <laughs> There's another one in Belgium, so I'm at last only a Clyde Hamill. <laughs> and this is my wife, Trudy. Ladies. Can we help you? Well, uh, we heard you were poking around the ranch today, making something about my dearly departed brother. We're looking into his death, yes. Good. A lot of people hated my brother. Maybe wanted him dead. A lot of people? Like who? Unionizing workers, the Fortin Bros Corporation, animal rights activists. I gave the police all the evidence I had, but they sat on it. Weren't interested in finding out who killed Dan. Can you expound on those leads? Well, we can provide you with all the information you need. But really, there's no need. Clyde and I agree on plenty, but we don't agree on this. Dan made a stupid mistake. A tragically stupid mistake. But just because my former husband had enemies... Uh, Dana said Dan was beloved around town. Look, Dana is a sweet girl, but... She has no idea when it comes to her father. She tell you she thinks she sees his ghost? (laughs) It's not uncommon for people who've lost someone to feel their presence. Especially where that person died. No, she says she says she sees his ghost. We know. But still a shadowy outline. Even she knows her eyes are playing tricks on her. She sent us whatever this is. Oh, an orb photo? Yeah, there's an easy explanation for it. Brenda. She's lost all perspective on her father and on whatever happened to him. But you don't think he was murdered? Well, I think a lot of people wanted him dead. Like I said, I do think he was murdered. I knew him, and I loved him, and I miss him. But I can still tell you he probably was asking for it when someone trapped him in that bin. (sighs) Uh, We're late for dinner. So is she. That tip line on your website still work? I think so. We'll be sending you something. Dana's a great kid, but I wouldn't trust her as far as I could throw this pickup truck. (laughs) Evening, ladies. Can I go to the hotel? How many times do I have to tell you? Lorena wants everyone here. Come on, stay for me. And me. I don't want to be a third wheel. I'm right here. You're not a third wheel. Because I am also here. I hear they have a great mushroom burger. Where are we supposed to eat? All the tables are against the wall. Are they doing some kind of line dancing? I am not doing line dancing. Oh, no. Community theater actors dancing into this very bar with hats and sunglasses? Who could have known? Rosalind, what do you know about this? know about this? I am this. And Rosalind can do backflips, of course. Where was she keeping that hat? Is that Andy dancing over there? Very on brand. And there's Pamela. She's not dancing, just sort of bobbing judgmentally. Half on brand. Are we the only sane people in this podcast? Where's 
Oh, Lorena? Wow, she looks great. Does she always travel with vintage ball gowns? Not before Labor Day. She should not stand on that table. Not in those heels. Be a Casely, my love. What? When I first met you, I'm in living in the past, and I still do. You can check out my podcast, my historical podcast, Remembering Forgotten Memories of Holly. Oh, sorry. Bia. Bia, 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 I'm... I wasn't a happy kid. I lived in history books. I remember sitting at my graduation wondering how anyone could be excited about the future. The best things were in the past, preferably in black and white. Years later, I made a living telling stories of old Hollywood. Though finally, happy in the present, I still couldn't imagine my future. Then I saw you. And I knew you. Your tenacity, your ideals, your wit, your passion, oh, your eyes. The way you crinkle your nose when someone incorrectly uses less instead of fewer. The way your eyebrows lift when you found the story. The way you blast Mozart on the freeway and belt Abba in the shower. My love, you are technical. I don't want the past. I want the future. I want what I see in you. Oh, God, she's off the table. She's down on one knee. Stop narrating. Beatrice Burberry Casely. Will you make me the happiest woman in all of history? Will you marry me? Uh. Uh. Bia? Maybe? It's a maybe! Rosalind, open up. We gotta talk about whatever that was. Come on, I got beer. Getting ready for bed. Oh. I haven't really seen you since I got back and I... Yeah, I know. You didn't... I just... We gotta talk about the proposal, right? We gotta talk about it. (laughs) Come in. So, B and Lorena update. Uh, B bought all of the Skittles in the vending machine, and Lorena keeps staring into the pool in her ball gown. Oh, jeez. Uh, yeah? It's the way the biscotti crumbles. Ah, uh, well, you know, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna turn in. You see this tip line email? Oh, oh, they don't, they don't let me play with the tip line. Not since I responded to everyone with rethink your preconceptions. It's from Clyde. What, why, why would we care about Clyde? Well, because we don't conduct investigations relying on only one source. And anyway, read this. Oh, come on. So she thinks she saw a ghost? I mean, we know that. She's still grieving. There are worse things than that. She thinks she recorded a ghost talking to her. Huh? Wait, so you have the audio file? Play it. I draw the line at supernatural phenomena. Since when? Aliens or a skunk ape I can touch. A ghost? (laughs) Imagine your whole afterlife spent hanging out around the grain bin where you died. Mm, I guess I'll try not to die in a grain bin. Fine, let's listen. Oh, let let me sit. I'm going to boost this and... uh... Just a little more. Wait, did it just say remember me? Our brains recognize patterns, Rosalind. Holy 
Holy shit. It's him. It's Dan Hamill. It's him. It's a plant. It's... Fine. Call Pamela. Tell her we got us a Lion King. Everywhere I go, everything I see, what I've got to do is staring back at me. All the time I wait, all the time I stall, in my mind I'm making progress, but I've done nothing at all. Barden Season 2, Episode 3, The True Crime Podcast's The Thing, was written by Allison Solano and Emily Vanderwerf and directed by Sarah Golub. Our recording engineer was Ernesto Hurtado, and the episode was primarily recorded at the Rebel Talk Network Studios in Los Angeles. It was edited by Ernesto Hurtado. Ghost sound effects by Chad Ellis. Our composer is Christopher Hatfield. Barden stars. Michelle Agresti. Tracy Syed. Libby Woodbridge. Shannon Estabrook. Charlita Gaston. Benjamin Watts. Mia Drake. Our guest stars this week are Zach Grenier. Rebecca Metz. Oscar Jordan. Mike Bash. Jennifer Liao. Grant Patrizio. Katie Wright. This episode featured the song Show Em I Mean Business, written by Laura Stratford and performed by Libby Woodbridge. You can find it on our soundtrack album. Gotta show em I mean business. Arden was created and executive produced by Emily Vanderwerf, Christopher Dole, and Sarah Gollum. Our co-executive producers are Chad Ellis, Libby Hill, and Ernesto Hurtado. Our logo is by Dylan Farr. This series is produced in Los Angeles County on the ancestral lands of the Tongva, Tataviam, and Shumash. Our website is ardenpodcast.com. You can also find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Tumblr. If you like this show, if you want to help us make more of it, there's so many ways you can do that. The quickest and easiest way is to toss us a few dollars on Patreon. You'll get access to early episodes, behind-the-scenes material, and episodic commentary. You can also, for a limited time only, still support us on Indiegogo, where we have a number of attractive perks available. You can buy special Arden-related merchandise on TeePublic, including a very festive Skunk Ape t-shirt. You can rate, review, and subscribe to the show wherever you found it. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and other platforms. But no matter what, we thank you for embracing America's ninth favorite audio fiction podcast, gentle listeners. As always, our animal trainer was Libby Woodbridge, who said, Oh, hell, a cougar! Join us next time for more adventures in Arden. Thank you, and good night. Gotta show them my mean business. This week, and every week, we'd like to thank our executive producer donors, Amy Tate, Danny Bell, and DJ Sutherland, who are more than just good people. They're the best. This week, we'd like to thank our Indiegogo backers, Bruce and Penny Campbell, Caitlin Sabano Davis, Keikis, Cara Easton, Carolyn Frank, Carrie Nelson, Cassie LaBelle, Cato Heskett, Sierra O'Brien, Channel Rochelle Ross, Chantel Hale, Christina Holloran, Christina Savage, Christopher Mangum, and Claudia Elvridge, who immediately knew this was a lot like The Lion King.